So I didn't realize how much I really loved the new A7C Mark II and the A7C R. Oh, I was gonna do a cool skid and then continue the intro. Okay, that hurt my knee. But the reason why I love both those cameras is because they remind me of the A7IV and the A7R5, but in a more compact camera body. Ow. Lighting's nice. Ooh, I picked a good spot. I should probably look at my notes so that I know what I'm talking about. But in terms of similarities, both the A7C Mark II and the A7CR had the same exact body design. Same squared off form factor as the original A7C, and both cameras are so similar that at Condo, there was this contest called What's in the Box, where we had to guess which Sony product was in this box by touching around. That sounds weird. But I got to the final round where the product was actually the A7C II, and it was a 50-50 chance for me to get this camera right. If you guess right, you win. It's the Sony A7C Mark II. Correct. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're champion. Anyway, both cameras have the same exact camera body design. They both have a bigger grip than the original A7C. Both cameras weigh 526 grams. They have a new mode dial, which I really love. Both cameras have the multi-interface hot shoe so that you can use Sony accessories like the ECM B10 digital mic. Both cameras have one SD card slot, a micro HDMI port, although one camera outputs raw video while the other does not. We'll talk about that later. Both cameras have the same small EVF as the original A7C, but much improved. And both cameras have the same three inch 1.36 million dot LCD touchscreen. In terms of video performance, both cameras can film 4K 10 bit 422 video. That's very cool. Both cameras can film as Cinetone, as Log3. Both cameras can use custom user LUTs, which I really love. Both cameras have the same seven stop stabilization, which is very impressive. And both cameras can film 4K 60p, but cropped. With the A7C2, you can only film 4K 60 in crop mode. So there's a 1.5X crop factor, where with the A7CR, you can film 4K 60 in full frame, but there's a 1.2x crop factor. I know, we'll talk about that later, and no, you cannot film 4K 120 with either cameras. Uh, just a few more things, both cameras have the same AI processor as the A7R5, meaning that you have improved autofocus and tracking. In fact, both cameras can recognize human skeletal movements, which is pretty insane. And both cameras have that really cool AI feature called auto framing, where the cameras basically can track and follow you and zoom in and out automatically. I love it, it's so cool, I use it all the time on the ZV-E1, and I really love that it's on both the A7C2 and the A7CR. And then both cameras have been tested to film over two hours in 4K at 24 frames per second. Both cameras have a mechanical and electronic shutter. Both cameras use a Sony Z battery. And lastly, both cameras can use that new extension grip, which is a little pricey at $150. I don't think it's worth getting, but if you get the A7CR, that extension grip comes with the A7CR. 150 bucks for the extension grip, not worth it. So those were all the similarities. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of the A7C Mark II. Pros, the A7C II is the cheaper option out of the two. I mean, it's still pretty pricey. It's gonna cost you $21.99 US dollars, where the A7CR is gonna cost you $3,000. Oh gosh. I feel like the A7C II should have been like $19.99 and the A7CR should have been $24.99. But yeah, bo both cameras are, are, are kind of pricey. The A7C II has a 33 megapixel sensor, which results in really high quality, high resolution photos. It's the same exact sensor as the A7 and I said in my review of that camera that 33 megapixel photos I feel is just the right size. Sometimes I feel like 61 megapixel photos are a bit too much. It takes up a lot of space on my hard drive and so I feel like 33 megapixels is, is just right. And if you're shooting in crop mode with the A7C2, you'll have 14 megapixel photos, which is better than the ZV-E1 and the A7S3. Like those cameras only shoot 12 megapixel photos. Another pro about the A7C Mark II is that when you're filming full frame in 4K, you're actually filming 7K over sampled, meaning that your 4K video looks a lot sharper. The A7CR is actually only 6.2K oversampled, but in crop mode, so 
there's that. And when you're filming in APS-C mode on the A7C Mark II, it's just 4K. No oversampling, just straight up 4K. And the last pro about the A7C Mark II is that when it comes to photography, it shoots 10 frames per second, just like the original A7C, where the A7C R only shoots eight frames per second. I know, weird, like the A7C R is meant to be the higher end camera, so it should shoot at least 10 frames per second, but it is what it is. All right, the cons of the A7C Mark II. 4K 60 crop. You can't film 4K 60 in full frame mode. You can only film 4K 60p in crop mode. Like I don't really mind so much. I mean, I very often film 4K 60 in crop mode. It's just that it's kind of a bummer that you can't film 4K 60 in full frame with the A7C Mark II. Another con is that there's no raw video output with the A7C Mark II. With the A7C R, you can, which is awesome, but I don't think it's that big of a deal, especially if you don't really connect a monitor to your camera anyway. I mean, if you want a camera that outputs raw video to a monitor with a full HDMI port, then, you know, obviously you get an A7S III, A7R5 or FX3. But I think we all have to remember that the A7C cameras are meant to be mid-tier cameras. Oh, and the, and the last thing that I don't like about the A7C Mark II and the A7C R is that there's no joystick. I like having a joystick. It's just life is better when there's a joystick. Now let's talk about pros and cons of the A7C R. Pros, the A7C R has a 61 megapixel sensor, the same exact sensor as the A7R5. I know I said before, like sometimes 61 megapixels is too much, but also 61 megapixels is so nice. Like the fact that you can like zoom in all the way and still have like really sharp photos. And then when you're shooting in crop mode with the A7C R, you're gonna have 26 megapixel photos. That is. So cool. Another cool thing I like about the A7CR when it comes to photography is that it has pixel multi shooting, meaning that you can composite up to 16 images, resulting in this super high resolution 240 megapixel photo, which is totally insane. Really cool if you're doing like high end product photography. I mean, I would never use it, but it's cool that I can. And I think that's pretty much it for the pros of the A7CR. I already said that in APS-C mode, there is a 6.2K oversampling when you're filming 4K, so sharper 4K video, but only in crop mode. And then cons of the A7CR, first has got to be the price, like at $29.99, like that's a very expensive camera. So obviously the A7C Mark II is the better valued camera, but if you got the money, you got the money. Uh, more cons, I think I've said this before, but there is a 1.2x crop when you're filming 4K 60p, but at least you get to film in full frame, so that's kinda cool. And on that note, there is no 4K 60 in crop mode. Again, kinda weird. And when it comes to photography, you can only shoot eight frames per second. And like I said before with the A7C II, there is no joystick. All right, so final thoughts, because I, I gotta get out of here. Which camera? do I think is better? Well, overall, I think the A7CR is the better camera. Like the fact that you can film 4K 60p in full frame is a no brainer. Kind of weird that you can only film 4K 60p with the A7C2. Also weird that there's no raw video output with the A7C2. Then again, these are budget mid-tiered cameras. And so yeah, you don't have all the, uh, the accoutrements of the higher end cameras. But I do think the A7C2 is the better valued camera. Like I know it's still kind of pricey, but you pretty much get an A7 IV in a smaller camera body. You get the same AI processor from the A7R5. You can shoot 33 megapixel photos at 10 frames per second, where the A7CR can only shoot eight frames per second. And I really do think you get more bang for your buck with the A7C2. Both cameras are actually great. You can't go wrong with either or. And I actually do think that the A7C series are the true hybrid cameras in all of Sony's library of cameras. There you go. I really need to wrap this up and get out the way. So if you're on a budget looking for a true hybrid camera that can kind of do it all, get the A7C2. If you are more into photography and you want more of those features like raw video output, you want to film 4K 60 in full frame and you have the money, then get the A7C R. I personally am getting the A7C R, pretty excited about that. And if you have the A7 or 5 like I do, the A7C R can be a perfect backup camera especially if you're a wedding photographer. But I think the biggest takeaway that no one really is talking about is that the original A7C is actually much cheaper. I think like at $1,600. And with that camera, you can film 4K video, you can shoot 24 megapixel photos, still has that small compact form, which is great for travel. And I think is the much better bang for your buck. And so, yeah, if you're on a real tight budget, but you still want a pretty kick butt camera, Check out the original A7C. All right, I gotta go. I feel like I'm getting in people's ways, but yeah. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, all those good things down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.